Hi guys, this is me Nitin and this is going to be a short video about using YOLO NAS to train a retailed product detection model. Now this is going to be a very simple video and all the dataset that you require is already uploaded on Kaggle. It is provided by some user. I am not the original author of the dataset. And I already have the notebooks prepared. So we will just go through the notebook. I'll explain bits of code and how you can get started with it. So let's move forward. So as you can see, this is my screen and this is the directory where I've already prepared the notebooks. I'll start by running a Jupyter lab in one instance. Once you do this, I will, you will go to your Jupyter lab net instance. Okay. So let's start with the notebook one that is your dataset preparation notebook. Okay. So in order to download the dataset, what you have to do is you'll have to visit this link and make sure that you are already signed in. Uh, and then you can click on this download button and it's start the download. Now, usually what I do is I simply go and copy link from here and paste it here in this window and download it directly through WGET. So it gets downloaded to the location in case you are working remotely, this hack might work for you. That's about download data set. And then once you extract this part, uh, it will unzip the archive and you'll get this SKU 100k fixed directory. Uh, that is your data set. So we can visualize how our data set looks like. So if I go to any of the directories, we have three splits and inside test, we have numerous files. We can open this image here directly or we can read it through OpenCV and then we can read the text file, parse it and then plot it. Let's quickly read on the code and you can see uh, this is how our data set looks like. So we have only one single class and that is product and then a bounding box is around it. Okay, so I think the distribution part is already clear. We don't have much to do here. So I'll just save and close this notebook. Now let's move forward to model training. Okay, so you would need a couple of dependencies. I have not wrote the requirements file. Instead, I just installed directly using pip. You can see the versions which I'm using. This is your super gradients, which is required to train your NAS model. I think this is not required uh, RoboFlow because we are not downloading data set from there, but you can skip this part. And then supervision is something which will require to visualize the bounding box once the model is trained. And OpenCV, this is the standard version which I'm using. Another thing is uh, installing OpenCV might have issues with you importing it. So uh, if you're in Linux environment, you can install these packages and then it should resolve your issues with OpenCV. Another thing is in case we are on a different Torch vision or Torch version, um, you can download it uh, from this link and it should work. So this is about the environment setup. Now let's move forward. So I'll just keep it size to one because I do not have a lot of GP memory here. I usually train these models on server, which has a lot of GP memories. So first thing is to import the uh, data loaders. That is your Coco detection YOLO format. So basically the data set should be in YOLO format and uh, you can see the annotations here. So if I go to labels test, uh, this is the standard YOLO format data sets. First one is your class index. Then these are your center coordinates. Then these are the height and width of the object. Okay. And those are all normalized. So it will depend on the image size. Okay. Now the thing is here is because we are going to use pre-trained model and do transfer learning. So the number of classes are actually fixed. So the one hack which I came around is basically as long as you have uh, classes less than 80, that is if you don't have uh, more than 80 plus classes, what you can do is you can define list and then add your product here. By the way, this is index based. So in your label file, uh, it says zero, which means at zeroth index, this is your class label that is product. And for rest other classes uh, to just uh, fill dummy classes, we will do something like iterate in the range of from zero to 80 and uh, minus it and the number of classes that we already added in the classes list and then append it to the classes. Uh, this is how it is done. And this is the dataset param. So this is something that you need to configure. So data diary is the root directory where you store your image and labels. So I just simply put the root directory name here and then train image directory is something which is related to data directory. So inside SQ100, you can see we have images directory inside that we have this train directory. So simply I put images slash train. Same for labels, it's called like labels slash train. And then simply you can fill for the well split and test it. Okay, and then pass the classes. And rest all I think this is already, uh, you don't have to change anything because it, it takes the parameters from this dictionary that we defined here. So data dir is simply reading it from here. And uh, this is a data loader params. So I've put the best set as one for now because I have a very limited GP memory, but you can increase based on the amount of GP memory available for you. Okay, so this was just a conf pick and let me quickly execute this cell as well. So it shows some console output, but at the end it should be ready to use. And it also caches the annotations to load it faster. So it's something good to have. Now we import the models and trainer and we are also defining a device here. So if you're using NVIDIA GPU, I can check it here. Okay, so I am on a RTX 3060. Okay, so if you have a good available, uh, this will be used by this variable. We, we use the models uh, that we imported here to define the architecture. I'm using Yolo small. You can also use medium or large size 
if you want to train a heavier model. Pre-trained weights is a Coco, and when you execute it for the first time, it will automatically download those pre-trained weights. And then I define a trainer, so this is your experiment name and the Indian directory where it should store the weight files. I already have one here, you can see this. So I'll accept this one. Now comes the training part. So you can define your epochs here, how many epochs you want to train it on, and these are some training parameters. You can play around with it, but I choose to go with the default configuration that they provide. Okay, this is set. Now all we have to do is start the training. So once you do this, if your data set and all the configuration is correct, it should start training. You can see that um, it is on epoch zero. And since we have all the size of one, so it is going to take a lot of steps and iterations to compute just one epoch. So I already trained the models. I'll just stop it for now. And we will just see how it looks and the weights that it looks like. So these are all the files that it wrote. These are TensorFlow uh, TF events, uh, which you can use TensorBoard to uh, visualize your training graphs. And then some standard logs, which you can tail to read it out. And the interesting thing here is, this is one, your average model.pth and then your average, uh, okay. So there will also be one more file called best model, but the crux here is, uh, this average model is the one which performs the best because it is average of all the best models and not all the weights that has been trained. So every time model improves, uh, best weight file is stored and then this average model basically contains the average of all those best weight files. So this is something I think you should use to uh, do the inference. Now let's look at the inference notebook, uh, this is here. So simply import these things, again define the devices, classes and define the model. This time we are defining checkpoint path and we are loading the average model. So we have loaded it. Now uh, let's list some test images which is inside this directory and we can randomly pick an image and run detections on that. So as you can see, these are the predictions from model and you can modify the uh, confidence here to get more or less bounding boxes. The confidence of the bounding boxes uh, will be less but it should work you can see it almost detects most of the products and based on your data set if you have well defined data set it will learn very well so this is about the trained model uh, but in production we actually do not deploy directly using pytorch since that occupies a lot of gp memory and is also slow so we have this deploy notebook let's look into it and basically in the deployment step what i'm doing is i'm converting the model weight files into onx format uh, and you can install this on a runtime uh, GPU version so that you can run your inference on GPU. So because we need to convert the model from PyTorch to ONX, so we are again importing these things. Let me execute this cell as well. And once this is done, uh, what we will do is uh, we will convert this to ONX. There is an inbuilt functionality to convert it to ONX format. So we will just utilize that. And with that, our ONX model is exported successfully. Now this is a custom code to inference through ONX. And uh, we have a directory here which contains the utilities to utilize the ONX file for inference. So I'll just import these utility functions and classes from there. We define a detect function here and let's load the weight files, the onX model. Okay. And these are pre-process and post-process functionalities, which we imported above. We are going to utilize that. And finally, this is the step where we are going to do the inference. So let's hope this runs well. See, let's wait for the results. All right. So we have our inference successfully done using the onX model. And it takes time to load up and the main reason for that is basically because of the large image size. So once you run it properly in a Python script, like this should actually work very well. So this is about the deployment part and as you can see the working model runs really well. So what I will do is I'll upload the these notebooks and the ONX wait file for you to directly use it. And since the PyTorch model is very large, so I will not upload those wait files. You can always train your own model. So I think with this we conclude the training notebook. So we successfully trained a yellow NAS small model on the SKU 100k dataset. You can really utilize the notebooks to train other datasets as well. And you can also use the pre-trained weights which I'll upload to basically inference and detect retail products for your own use case. So thank you guys. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please do like, comment, subscribe, all those things. This supports me. And this also motivates me to, to come up with more uh, detailed notebook and uh, guides so that you can all follow up and then do the thing that you want to do. Okay guys, thank you. Bye.